Marine turtles date back to the late Triassic age, at around 200 million years ago. Just like any other reptile, they have scales, lay eggs, and breathe air. The shells on their backs are called carapace, while the underside is the plastron. Together, they house all the vital organs of marine turtles. Instead of feet, they have powerful flippers which they use to swim great distances. There are seven species of marine turtles in the world. Green turtle, flatback, Kemp's ridley, loggerhead, olive ridley, hawksbill, and the leatherback. All but one are facing extinction. They can weigh anywhere from 35 kilos up to a whopping 600 kilograms. Out of the seven, five can be found in the Philippines. Three of those can be found in Bataan, with one species, the olive ridley, regularly nesting around the beach near the Pawican Conservation Center. During the nesting season, female olive ridley turtles come up to the beach of Morong to find suitable, stable sand for their eggs. They can lay from 40 up to 190 eggs in a single clutch. After 45 to 75 days, the little hatchlings emerge from the sand and make their way towards the sea. They find their way out to the open ocean, nibbling on plankton and jellyfish, among other prey, along the way to their oceanic habitat. Once they get older, when they return near the coasts, their diets vary. Olive ridleys prey mostly on crustaceans and mollusks. Green turtles eat seagrass, while others prey on sponges and crab. One thing's for sure though, they won't pass up on a nice jellyfish meal. After roughly 15 years, up to 50 for some species, the mature female olive ridley turtles will come up to the same beach they were born in, to lay their own clutch of eggs. Less than 1% of the eggs will survive to adulthood. Predators such as crabs, seabirds, and bigger fish eat turtles, especially when they are still small. Sadly, humans contribute to most of the threat to their survival. Here are some examples of how human activities affect these turtles. Since marine turtles are air-breathing animals, they have to come up to the surface to breathe regularly. If the surface is covered with oil spill or they're caught in nets, they can choke, suffocate, and even drown. And that's not all. Hungry turtles can easily mistake plastic for food, which can give them a life-threatening tummy ache. Despite protection, humans still catch turtles for food using their meat and for home decorations with their beautiful carapace. Even eggs are stolen by poachers. The rising sea levels caused by global warming as well as irresponsible beachside developments, decrease the number of safe nesting spots for marine turtles. Because they use the brightest light as their guide to the sea, some get disoriented by artificial lights and follow those instead, making them more susceptible to predators and not even finding the sea at all. You may be asking, why conserve marine turtles? For one, marine turtles keep jellyfish populations in check. Because of this, fish, eggs, and larvae have less predators to worry about. You will have less stingers to worry about too. Marine turtles also provide a home to small, nutrient-rich organisms called epibionts. By attaching to their shells, these epibionts get to consume a wide variety of diets, thus keeping their populations healthy. These same epibionts, when in great numbers, become a very ideal food source for different species of fish and shrimp. As marine turtles go through cleaning stations, the epibionts are freed up, allowing other species to benefit from a yummy meal. This translates to more marine organisms available for us humans to benefit from. These are just a few examples of the importance of marine turtles to our ecosystem. We need to make sure that their wild populations remain healthy and their habitats livable for us to experience their beauty and ecological contributions for our own and our children's benefit. The Powican Conservation Center's Bantay Powican is a group of local poachers turned volunteers 
Corvald do just that. Every night during the nesting season, they walk the whole stretch of beach in search of marine turtle nests. If they chance upon a nesting mother, they tag them before release. Then, they transfer the natural nests to their hatchery to protect the eggs from poachers, predators, and flooding from high tides. All the vital information recorded from each nesting season are sent to the DENR Pawican Conservation Project's Marine Turtle Database. The database serves as a very important reference for marine conservation efforts in the country. Wondering what you can do to help save the Pawicans too? Here are five simple things. 1. Do not buy any marine turtle products. 2. Reduce plastic waste. Bring your own reusable bags and water bottles and pick up any trash you see. Remember, all drains lead to the ocean no matter how far inland they may be. 3. Do not disturb marine turtles or destroy their habitats. Always keep a safe distance from them. 4. Report sightings and illegal activities to the proper authorities. Most importantly, share what you have learned and engage others to save the Powicans too.